What the heck is a thumb sling thunderhead? was easy. I don't do a lot of barehanded hand drilling. For the most part, I don't practice often enough to build up calluses and keep my hands in good condition. And so when I do try it, oftentimes I end up with blisters and sore hands and a lot of frustration. So with the idea of trying to work smarter instead of harder, after a lot of trial and error and experimentation, I invented the thing I call the thumb sling thunderhead. Here's my favorite one. This top piece is made from Osage Orange. The cords are four strands of reversed wrapped artificial sinew and my thumb slings are made out of uh, some scrap leather. Here's another one I made. This one's made out of a big fatwood plug that I pulled out of a pine knot. It's got uh, some leather cords and again, some scrap leather thumb slings. Here's a little one that I made out of some half inch PVC plumbing parts. That's micro paracord there. And again, some scrap leather thumb slings. And here's yet another one. This one is also made out of fat wood, but the cordage is reversed wrapped dog bane. This one is all found natural stuff that I picked up in the woods. I've made a lot of videos about my various thumb sling thunderheads and I've gathered them in a uh, playlist. I'll put a link to that down in the description. I encourage you to go watch some of them. The thumb sling thunderhead is sometimes what I call an engineering invention, meaning that it builds upon other people's ideas in a unique and maybe innovative way. It all started with traditional thumb loops. Probably many of you have already tried to use these to make hand drilling a little bit simpler. So let's start with that. Um, I don't much care for this, although I've, I've been pretty successful with traditional thumb loops. I've made plenty of embers using uh, arrangements like this. But one, the first thing I don't particularly care about it is that these loops tend to cut into my thumbs pretty bad. I ended up with some uh, pretty bad blisters on occasion. I don't much care for that. That's the reason I put those leather thumb slings uh, on my thumb sling thunderhead to sort of uh, relieve that pressure. Another thing I don't much care about traditional uh, thumb loops like this is you can see here I've got this uh, uh, sort of bright green paracord whipped onto the end of my goldenrod stalk. You don't have to necessarily do that. Uh, you can carve a notch into the end of your spindle if you want and lay your, uh, your thumb loops down over top. What I've found though is 
if you press too hard after notching the top of your spindle, you run the risk of splitting your wildflower stalk right down the middle. So I tend to whip mine onto the end of my spindles, and that makes it difficult to move from one spindle to the next. The thing that I dislike most about traditional thumb slings, though, is that after I rotate the spindle just a quarter of a turn, the cord starts wrapping back up around the spindle. And that causes a counter rotation uh, torque that works against me. The harder you push, the more it wraps up and the harder it becomes for you to, to continue. And it also limits the amount of rotation you can get out of a spindle using traditional thumb loops. I can usually get about one, maybe one and a half rotations before uh, it just, the cords are wrapped up around the spindle so tight that I just can't move it. You can, you can alleviate some of that by using skinnier cords. Skinnier cords uh, tend to uh, result in less counter rotation torque but those skinnier cords will cut into your thumbs that much worse. Another thing you can do is use longer cords. As you increase the length of your traditional thumb loops, that alleviates some of that counter-rotational torque. But the problem with that is that from about right there up is wasted spindle. So the longer your traditional thumb loops are, the more spindle you end up wasting. So my goal was to come up with a way that didn't cut into my thumbs. I solved that using the leather thumb slings. I wanted my cords as short as possible. Uh, so I wasted as little spindle as possible. And I wanted, my, uh, uh, I wanted my spindle to rotate freely in that upper cap so that I got more rotation and no counter rotating torque. Those were my goals, and uh, after a lot of trial and error, I came up with a thumb sling thunderhead. So let's take a look at that. Well, here again is my favorite Osage Orange thumb sling thunderhead. The first thing to notice is the uh, leather blister-free thumb slings that I've pointed out already. Next thing to notice is that the spindle rotates very freely in this upper cap. The reason I call this a thumb sling thunderhead is because this upper cap works in much the same way as a thunderhead does in a traditional bow drill set. In the bottom of your thunderhead there will be a divot and the spindle will rotate freely in that divot and the thunderhead will then be used to apply downward pressure on your spindle. Well that's the same action that this cap provides to this spindle in my thumb sling thunderhead. You'll also notice that it's easy to move from one spindle to the next. You just pick it up and move it. The best thing is that since the spindle rotates freely in that upper cap, I get lots and lots and lots of free rotation without any uh, opposing torque. And because I don't have that opposing torque, I can make my cords as short as I'd like them. These are about two and a half or three inches long. Well, that's a thumb sling thunderhead. Makes for some very fast, easy, blister-free, hassle-free embers using hand drill techniques. As I mentioned earlier, I've uh, collected uh, several videos that I've made on my various thumb sling thunderheads and put them in a playlist on my channel. I encourage you to watch a few of those and maybe try building a thumb sling thunderhead for yourself. I think you'll really like it. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. By the way, if you've watched many of my videos, you know that I like to use wildflower stalks in my bow drill sets. Well, that all started a couple of years ago when I was doing a lot of hand drill practice. As I would wear down my uh, spindles to the point where I was no longer able to use them effectively, I was just tossing them into my uh, kindling pile. And I thought that was really unfortunate because they had usually worked very well for me. One day it occurred to me, maybe I could cut those little spindles down into smaller pieces and make a miniature bow drill set. Now here's a smallish mullen hand drill spindle that's still got a little bit of life in it, 
But you can see if I cut that into two or three pieces, I've got a couple of good bow drill spindles. All I needed to do was use a little bit smaller cord and a little bit smaller bow and the rest is history.